I mentioned sort of improved production and lower cost. Can we just focus on cost for a second? What's coming down? What's sticky? So, uh, I mean, a little bit of both, Alex. Uh, it's nice to see you again. And, and, and as you know, in mining, when you increase your production, you drive your costs down. So, uh, you know, the, the pressure is the pressure remains from oil and some of the oil related consumables we use. But as far as logistics and um, and some of the other more sort of routine costs, um, uh, we've seen a, a flattening and 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 in some cases slightly down. Oh, OK. Wow. Well, that's something. So you're seeing actual disinflation in some categories. Yeah. So, okay, that's one side. Let's go to the production side. Um, you've, you've had some, not, I don't want to say issues because they're not issues, but overall year-end gold production target, you're going to probably miss what you had forecast. W what's going on? W where are the operational constraints? So there are two big things in our growth profile. Uh, well, actually, three. But the, the first one is, we, uh, as you know, back in 2018, we set out to, to re-establish Pueblo Viejo, which mm -hmm. is a very large coal mine that was about to close in 2021. We've now got that permitted. We, we've invested in the expansion of the processing facility. We're busy ramping it up. And we had some issues with our flotation cells that were supplied by um, F.L. Schmidt, and, and also a portion of a conveyor belt collapsed on commissioning. We've re-engineered them, and the, the cells we'll have done by the end of the year, and the, and the conveyor belt, we've got a, an, an interim mobile conveyor belt established already. Uh, it'll still produce at over 800,000 ounces next year. It's that ramp up that, uh, that'll impact our, this year's production. And then the other one is the delay in, uh, in the record of decision for our gold rush project in Nevada. Um, mm -hmm. We've just received that um, um, notice uh, on the on last Friday, and so that'll come. You know, it'll move ahead now. And we those two projects are big drivers in Barrick's profile going forward. I see. Okay, um, talking about project delays. This does not actually affect you at all, but I want to get your thoughts on it. And that's what's happening with First Quantum in Panama. So kind of all of a sudden, lawmakers have now voted to repeal a new contract with First Quantum Minerals. Some of the stuff on the table is like no new mineral rights ever. Are we in a new era of geopolitical risk for miners, a new era of governments trying to take more of a piece of the pie? I know you deal with this and you've dealt with this for decades, but is this something different? No, it's not different. And, you know, Alex, you and I have spoken about this, this license to operate. Your most important stakeholder as a miner today more than ever is the government, your host government. And we as an industry need to invest in that more heavily. You know, shareholders benefit from a strong so social license or license to operate. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, we go back to the old uh, way of thinking where, you know, it's it, you're doing a country a favor by investing in it. And, you know, that's something I've learned over my career. It's a tough when it goes against you, as we witnessing mm -hmm. today. It requires hard work and you can't manage this from some 16 story head office you've got to be on the ground you've got to you know it's a relationship business like most businesses have become today mm -hmm. and young people want to be part of it they want to see you doing the right thing it's not just a case of exploitation it's got to be investment with benefits right. for all stakeholders so I guess that brings me to the question of M&A. We have Newmont just closing its deal for Newcrest next week. Uh, uh, First Quantum obviously in a really bad spot. Are there opportunities for M&A? Is it going to be just growth to buy versus organic growth? Is that just the way forward? We've seen that in the oil industry, for example. Well, I think in the oil industry, some of those deals have been very uh, opportunistic, and that's the best M&A you can do. You know, I started the, the, the new barrack on the back of three very aggressive at-market uh, acquisitions. Um, and and there we've chased all these recent acquisitions, but it's hard to create value at the top of the market. M&A mm -hmm. is all about... Uh, ad hoc opportunity that creates value. Otherwise, all it is is, a, is an opportunity to get bigger. 
without being able to deliver the value to your stakeholders. So, um, you know, I think we'll we'll retain that strategy. And mm -hmm. I think the the flip side of that is in this five years, we've replaced everything we've mined. We've got a 30% organic growth. We don't have to pay a premium for that. Yeah. Embedded in our, our next five years. And and uh, and so we've got lots to, to be uh, to happy do. with. We've got <laughs> no debt. Well, no debt, independent of the market. You know, the stories I always tell you. Mark. And lots of opportunities and organically. So to that point, we're asking all our guests today what the global economy needs more right now, hikes or cuts. And I'm just wondering what your take is on that. What I know you don't have that? any debt on the one hand, you know, but you are levered to the gold price, for example, which could probably do with some rate cuts. What, what do you think? So the global economy is in a very difficult position because it ignored the pressures of inflation and continued with free money printing uh, or quantitative easing. And then when it worked out that it was wrong, it jacked the interest rates up at a very rapid rate. And now it's caught because it actually needs to increase interest rates, but it can't because it will destroy the global economy and if it and it can't drop them, so you're in that stagflation mm -hmm. band. The equities are too expensive, uh, generally across the world. Uh, the the emerging markets are in real stress, created by a very selfish Western economic block, uh, the developed economies. And so, you, and and on top of that, a, a thick spread of chaos. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Soft base metals. You see the base metals company companies worrying about how they manage the future. And a China. Very, a very, a, the whole global economy is in pressure, under pressure. So mm -hmm. that's good for gold. Um, and but uh, you know it's a it's a difficult time. And and this is the time, Alex, when you've done those M and A deals that are very expensive. Yeah. They're hard to get through the trough. So you know, and I think that's why you know. I feel very good about our strategy in Barrick, and yep. we're extremely well positioned because M&A is always there. It's when you when you when you take it on, when you take the opportunity, is the critical thing. Yeah, and Mark. sometimes it makes money, and sometimes it doesn't.